Welcome to the 16th episode of the Plug in India show. I'm Abhishek and I'm Rafi. Where's Amit? Abhishek, how come you're here? I don't know. I woke up this morning and my hands and legs were tied and I was in this room. I think they kidnapped me to do this show because Amit has gone MIA. <laughs> That's so, right. I don't mind doing it. But you better come back next month, Amit. Because there's a lot of work and I'm not doing it every month. Okay? Uh-huh. This and all previous episodes of the Plug in India show are brought to you by our awesome Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members. By supporting us, you help keep the show independent. This helps us bring you neutral EV analysis. That's right. And when you do subscribe to us, you get access to our Discord server and you can use that to directly interact with Plug in India team members. Okay, Rafe, in this episode, we are going to be talking about Mahindra Electric, which, as I remember, was the first big Indian auto brand to launch an electric vehicle in India. That's right, Abhishek, and we've been seeing some interesting changes happening at Mahindra Electric, and we're sure this is a good thing. Right. Is Mahindra Electric back? In our Indian EV news section, the first story is about Mahindra Electric, and our very own Kamlesh wrote a blog about it, about how Mahindra Electric is reinventing itself in its second decade of offering electric vehicles in India. Dr. Pawan Goenka, Managing Director and CEO of Mahindra and Mahindra Limited, spoke about Mahindra Electric's renewed focus and investment in electric vehicles during the launch of the Trio Zor electric cargo loader. He also spoke about the imminent launch of the EKUV compact SUV and Atom last mile electric mobility solution. So the all important question is, will this be version 2 of Mahindra's electric vehicle journey? How will things be different this time around? Well, Abhishek, it's been quite disappointing. Mahindra Electric could have actually been leaders in the electric vehicle segment by now. And they could have been offering two to three variants or options in every segment that they are in. So the pace of innovation and the will to sell electric vehicles at Mahindra has been abysmally low. Mm. Over the last 10 years, since they acquired Reva Electric Car Company, they have launched the following electric vehicles. Mahindra E2O Small Electric Car, which was discontinued in 2016. Mahindra E2O Plus Hatchback, which was discontinued in 2019. The Mahindra E-Supro Van, which was discontinued in 2019. And the Mahindra e Valido electric cab, which is still going strong as of 2020. So, Rafi, I think one out of four is a failure in anyone's books. That's right. And uh, I think in my opinion, only the e Valido actually racked up as a success story for them, which is also because they were selling mainly to fleet companies. Hmm. Yeah, I agree with your assessment, Rafi. And uh, But I'd just like to point out that despite everything, Mahindra has had some success in this department. We have to remember that for a long time, they were the only large company offering EVs in the, in the Indian market. And so far, they have completed 250 million kilometers of oil and emission-free transportation. And they have saved 25,000 metric tons of CO2 from being released into the atmosphere, which is no small feat. Yeah, that's actually fantastic, Abhishek. I would have to admit that. It just goes to show, Abhishek, that even with a half-hearted effort, a big auto company can achieve so much in the EV space. And with even a 50% more effort, they would have achieved so much more. Hmm. If you ask me, it seems like EVs were almost being held back by Mahindra in the last decade. One of Mahindra's biggest mistakes was not retaining Mr. Chetan Maini, who pioneered the electric vehicle movement in India. He was let go in 2014 and once he left, a lot of the senior management left as well. Not only that, a lot of the processes, systems and technologies that were invented by the original Reva team were also ditched by Mahindra. So, Mahindra had a long time and a lot of opportunities to grab the market by the scruff of its neck and take charge but it entirely failed to do so. Despite how negative most ICE OEMs are, Abhishek, I think Things at Mahindra Electric are changing and it's positive, it looks good. Yes, indeed. Dr. Pavan Goenka, in fact, spoke recently about Mahindra's renewed commitment to electric vehicles in India. Here is what he had to say. Mahindra will develop an electric vehicle charging ecosystem in India. Mahindra will launch its own electric vehicle chargers for low voltage vehicles. Mahindra will invest 500 crores for India's first state-of-the-art electric vehicle technology and R&D center at Bangalore Airport. World-class facility in Pune for manufacturing high-voltage battery packs 
power electronics bms controllers motors and more mahindra is also open to licensing these components to other oems the trio and trio zone will be fully made in india except for the lithium ion cells the ekuv electric car will be india's most affordable electric car and will be launched in jan 2021 the atom electric car is a new age urban mobility solution for first and last mile connectivity it sh- it should be launched by march 2021 these efforts are indeed really impressive especially towards localization mahindra electric is making all electronic components locally especially the motors and electronics uh, this is fantastic it's an example of how the ev industry is way ahead of other industries especially when it comes to things like solar panels mobile phones pharmaceutical industries and dependency on china that's a great start to this decade abhishek but i think with mahindra i would like to see certain things ensured and put in place number 1 they should focus on software systems and technologies which make sure that the vehicles on road are monitored and customers are alerted well in advance of any potential hazards or problems that they are going to face we all know how terribly me has been mismanaging the e2o and the e2o plus customers in this department Secondly Mahindra should clearly offer better service experiences for their customers we have seen that this is abysmal uh, in many places the i service uh, center is clubbed with the ev service center and customers don't get as good a service as they would have had it been a purely ev service center so that's what it should be it should be a purely ev service center so that the customers can get better taken care of and this won't create any conflict of interest with the ice dealers we have seen many cases where the ice dealers don't make as much money from the ev customers as they do from an ice customer and hence the service is catchy third mahindra should not inflate the prices of its evs if you remember the p8 was being at being sold at a rate of 12 lakhs the mahindra e supro a van with no frills at all was being at sold at the rate of 11 lakhs it's ridiculous uh, fortunately now things seem to be looking a bit more promising with the trio zor costing only about 2.5 lakhs i was researching mahindra small commercial vehicle segment which has vehicles such as the supro van or the bolero pickup truck mahindra needs to expand its ev portfolio in the next 5 years and this small commercial vehicle segment is an excellent candidate for doing that so an electric bolero pickup truck would be an awesome addition to their portfolio i'm sure many businesses would really go for it so mahindra currently has a large number of options in the ice vehicle category but very few or none in the electric vehicle category i'm sure many businesses will consider these and the game is right now skewed towards the ice vehicle segment this is what mahindra needs to change we keep reading articles by mainstream news media about how the sales of evs are low but these media companies seem to enjoy taking a dig at evs for some reason the real reason that ev sales are low is that the playing field is still not level even after so many years there are 10 diesel and petrol options in the market for one electric vehicle how is that fair so in many cases you are right we have oems where have zero ice zero ev options but in this case at least for mahindra i feel that they should focus uh, more on the commercial side of things because they have got huge experience in that area we are counting on you mahindra electric so guys what do you think about mahindra electric's new journey what do you expect from mahindra when it comes to launching commercial electric vehicles do write your thoughts in the comments below and we'll try to get them to mahindra's r&d team and obtain their response all right moving on to the second news item the european federation for transport and environment has conducted research on plug in hybrid electric vehicles and found out that they pollute far more than their manufacturers claim the agency has asked european governments to put an end to the subsidies and generous tax exemptions that these automakers receive the agency believes that these practices are actually fueling new emission scandals so this is just another example how big ice manufacturers use the word hybrid and cheat government agencies and people mm. the report names three plug in hybrid vehicles in sold in europe the volvo xc60 the mitsubishi outlander and the bmw x5 each of these are emitting more co2s than they are advertising 
So these vehicles, they go 25 to 45 kilometers in pure electric mode and then change over to petrol. Also, most of the users don't even bother to charge their batteries and end up going in petrol mode all the time. The three vehicles emitted 28 to 89 percent more CO2 than when they were tested by emissions analytics on a fully charged battery under optimal conditions. On an empty battery, the vehicles emitted three to eight times more than their official values. Launching plug-in hybrids has become a convenient way for automakers to make big profits by obtaining purchase incentives and tax breaks. These automakers have found that electric hybrids are a convenient way for them to make big profits. That money is better allocated to clean, pure electric cars. So it's about time that these OEMs are exposed and that this fraud is stopped. In India, the car OEMs are launching mild hybrid systems which do not require the owner to plug in the car at all. For example, the MG Hector Hybrid uses a 48 volt mild hybrid system which only offers some torque improvements at low speeds and it also charges the battery while the car is running and regenerative braking is what charges the tiny battery in the car. But ultimately, most of the work is being done by the petrol engine and that totally defeats the purpose of reducing city emissions or reducing the amount of oil used. You're exactly right. And I can't tell you how pissed off I get when I see hybrid written in large font behind SUVs like the MG Hector or other large SUVs. What a scam. This report is a warning to our policymakers to ignore hybrids and focus entirely on clean green electric vehicles. The third news item. 4.8 million tons by 2024. That is how much carbon emissions will be reduced by the Delhi government's electric vehicle policy. This was determined at the prestigious UNFCC Race to Zero Dialogue launching the global race to zero emission mobility. They said that the motivation behind Delhi's ambitious roadmap to transition to zero emission vehicles is to address both climate change and the health emergency that has arisen from the high level of air pollution in Delhi. The Delhi government's EV policy focuses on a very clear goal. They want 25% of all newly registered vehicles to be electric vehicles by the year 2024. Currently, that number stands at 0.2%. To give you more information, the Delhi government has approved 100 models of electric vehicles including 45 e-rickshaws, 14 two-wheeler models and 12 four-wheelers. If you buy an EV in Delhi, the subsidy process is straightforward. Kailash Galot, the Transport and Environment Minister of Delhi said the following. The whole process of subsidy payment will be online. Anyone purchase an, ele an electric vehicle will require a sales invoice of the vehicles, his or her ADA number and a cancelled check to claim the subsidy. The dealer will process the subsidy claim on his or her end through the website. The claims will be verified by the motor licensing officers concerned and forwarded to the banks for subsidy payment. At each stage of processing of the subsidy claim, from the dealer to the bank, the buyers will receive updates through SMS. Right Abhishek, and you will remember that we discussed the Delhi EV policy in detail a few months back. And the devil lies in the implementation. However, the website that you mentioned, it is a very good start and it will help people understand how the entire subsidy process works, especially the SMS alerts that are going to the customers. They will help instill confidence in people and make help them go for EVs. So here's something for you to chew on. There are more than 110 lakhs or nearly a crore vehicle registered on Delhi streets right now, out of which 75 plus lakhs are two wheelers. So my question is, how will Chief Minister Kejriwal ensure that 25% of these vehicles become EVs by 2024? We only have three years. How will Mr. Kejriwal get 27.4 lakh EV registrations in just three years time when no other big auto manufacturer in India is willing to manufacture EVs? So if Kejriwal is serious about this target of electric uh, electrification by 2024, 
many of the major manufacturers like TVS, Bajaj, Hero, they will need to get on board, produce electric vehicles, electric scooters mainly and not only that, they will need to have the will to sell electric vehicles. Mr. Kejriwal may well wash off his hands and say that he created the policy but point his finger at the center for not leveraging the auto manufacturers. So to sum up, just like in many other cases in India, legislation exists to solve the pollution problem, but implementation is the real issue. That's right Abhishek, just like California and the US, they were the first to implement these strict norms which required EV manufacturers to have a certain percentage of electric vehicles in their fleet and it forced the companies to make EVs and get them on the roads. This is what Delhi can be for India. It can be the city which goes first. Of course, it's a capital city, but it's also one of the cities which is worst hit by air pollution. So this makes it doubly more uh, important for Delhi to be the one to lead the way. Right. So we're looking at you, Delhi government and Mr. Kejriwal. We hope that you come up with some progressive policies. We hope that you are able to successfully implement this policy and we wish you all the best.